tonight, we look at one Michael Levine Robinson, missing to this day, or did he pull off a daring caper to become First Lady of the United States of America? It all started back on September 4th, 2014, after comedian Joan Rivers died while undergoing a routine surgical procedure. Many began pointing to an interview she had done only two weeks earlier after officiating a gay wedding. And do you think that the country will see the first, the United States will see the first gay president or the first woman we president? We have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. Got it. No, Michelle. Is a trans. I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh my gosh. Was Barack Obama ashamed to be the first gay president? Many believe he forced Michael to hide his true transgender self. Unsolved inquisitories uncovered not one, but two clips of the president slipping up. You know what my kids asked me? They said, You've got to ask the president, is anything scary? You know, uh, well, when my, my, my when uh, Michelle's mad. Men and women of the finest military in the world. Most of all, Admiral Mullen, Deborah. Michael and I also want to acknowledge uh, your son Jack, who's deployed today. All of you have performed extraordinary service to our country. In addition to this mystery, several people have pointed out a striking resemblance between their children and family friends Martin Nesbitt and Anita Blanchard. And in one final twist, you could see Michelle Obama here on The Ellen Show with a certain something swinging to the music. Or here, where she was caught fixing herself while exiting from this building. With all this evidence, is it really still a question? You'll have to ask yourself, how well do we know the Obamas? You are absolutely right that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith, and you're absolutely right that that is not Christian faith. My, my Christian faith. What's your question? How long have you been with Barack Obama? Have I, we been married? Uh, 20 something years. Wait, somebody, you guys know the date. When was it? It's been, it's been over a decade. It's been a while. Deborah, Michael and I also want to Acknowledge uh, your son Jack, who's deployed today. When my, my, my when uh, Michelle's mad, uh, I get worried. <laughs> There's a certain look that she can give me that uh, tells me that's your survival instinct. Tell, tell me, but you know, I don't have a lot of phobias uh, yeah. as, as a general rule. I mean, I, I, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, obviously as big of a thrill seeker as you are. But uh, I have a few phobias. Mo mo most of the time, I'm game. You know, what my kids asked me. They said, "You've got to ask the president. Does anything scare him?" You know, uh, well, when my, my, my when uh, Michelle's mad. You know, my kids asked me, they said, you've got to ask the president, does anything scare him? You know, uh, well, when my, my, my when uh, Michelle's mad. Do you think that the country will see the first, the United States will see the first gay president or the first woman well, we president? We already have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. Got it. You know Michelle is a trans. Uh, I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh my gosh. It's okay. The crowd Famous, famous knows 
something we don't know, no, like I'm gonna no, no, die, no. you know what I mean? No. if tonight I died on your show because they would get to see a show and a death for the rest of your lives, audience. <laughs> you would go to dinner parties. They'd say, you were there? Seriously, I cannot walk down the stairs. You go. Can I help you here? <laughs> you know, it would be nice if tonight I died on your show because they would get to see a show. Seriously, I cannot walk down the stairs. You go. Can I help you here?
been considered a precious commodity, but Stan Meyer's invention may make it even more valuable. He has developed what's called a water fuel cell. It has taken the place of his old gas tank. The water fuel cell breaks down water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is used to run his dune buggy. And I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. If you don't have any fresh water, go ahead and use snow. If you don't have any snow available to you, then use salt water because there's no adverse effect to the fuel cell. Meyer started working on this project four years ago. He's not a scientist. He isn't even a chemist. In fact, he never graduated from college. Myers was determined, he says, to design something to protect this country from oil embargoes. And we have calculated that if we take the dune buggy from Los Angeles to New York, we would roughly use 22 gallons of water. The Pentagon flew a lieutenant colonel in last week to look at Myers' invention. There's talk of possibly using it in the Star Wars defense program and to run army tanks. Myers is currently perfecting a water fuel cell for cars. It will cost about $1,500. He says it won't need any maintenance and you won't have to replace it. It'll be at least two years before the fuel system goes into mass production. The date happens will be one the fuel industry hates, but it'll put a smile on the face of those who've had to say at one time or another, fill her up. conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down like, why all these brothers gotta wear a dress? This happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> They come in, it's the writer comes in, I think he's the writer, he's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail, so he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on, and it, huh, what, the prostitute? No, nah, I'm not doing that, I don't feel comfortable with that. That should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it, I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? Ba -ba 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 -ba. You know, we're going like this. And then finally he's like, ah. And he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave. It really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this, a uh, broke back mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then, <laughs> I wear the, I wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, uh, oh, gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes, come on, David, would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen, man, you know, strong... Brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. Guy comes back ten minutes later, the whole new scene. Hot damn, how did you write the scene so fast? You know, it's like, so you got to take a stand.
A new day was dawning. Yes, one more. more. bigger than money though Dave it's so much bigger than money oh no it was bigger than money but you know what I, I watched one of these nature shows one time and they were talking about how a bushman finds water when it's scarce mm -hmm. and they do what's called a salt trap I, I, I didn't know this apparently baboons love salt okay so they put a lump of salt in a hole and they wait for the baboon the baboon comes sticks his hand in the hole grabs the salt Salt makes his hand bigger, and he's trapped. He can't get his hand out. Now, if he's smart, all he does is let go of the salt. Baboon doesn't want to let go of the salt. Then the bushman just comes, takes the baboon, throws him in the cage, and gives him all the salt he wants. And then the baboon gets thirsty. The bushman lets him out of the cage. The first place the baboon runs to is water. Bushman follows him, and they both drink to their fill. And in that analogy, I felt like the baboon. But I was smart enough to let go of the salt. Isn't that a great analogy? What an analogy! I know, he's very, very thoughtful and very... The Secret Covenant An illusion will be created so vast, so large, that it escapes their perception. Those who see it will be thought of as insane. We will always stand above the relative field of their experience, for we know the secrets of the Absolute. We will work together always, and we will remain bound by blood and secrecy. Death will come to he who speaks. We will keep their lifespans short and their minds weak while pretending to do the opposite. We will use our knowledge of science and technology in subtle ways so they will never see what is happening. We will use soft metals, aging accelerators and sedatives in food and water. Also in the air, they will be blanketed by poisons everywhere they turn. The soft metals will cause them to lose their minds. We will promise to find a cure from our many fronts, yet we will feed them more poison. The poisons will be absorbed through their skin and mouths. They will destroy their minds and reproductive systems. For all this, their children will be born dead, and we will conceal this information. They will see our products being used in films, and will grow accustomed to them, and will never know their true effect. When they give birth, we will inject poisons into the blood of their children and convince them that it's for their health. We will start early on, when their minds are young. We will target their children with what children love most, sweet things. When their teeth decay, we will fill them with metals that will kill their minds and steal their future. When their ability to learn has been affected, we will create medicines that will make them sicker and cause other diseases for which we will create yet more medicine. We will render them docile and weak, so they succumb to us and our power. They will grow depressed, slow and obese. 
And when they come to us for help, we will give them more poison. We will focus their attention towards money and material goods, so that they may never connect with their inner self. We will distract them with fornication, external pleasures, and games, so that they may never be one with the oneness of all. Their minds will belong to us, and they will do as we say. If they refuse, we shall find ways to implement mind-altering technology into their lives. We will use fear as our weapon. We will establish their governments and establish opposites within. We will own both sides. We will always hide our objective and carry out our plan. They will perform the labor for us and we shall prosper from their toil. Our families will never mix with theirs. Our blood must be pure, always, for it is the way. We will keep them separated from the oneness by dogma and religion. We will control all aspects of their lives. We will make them kill each other when it suits us and tell them what to think and how. We will guide them kindly and gently, letting them think they are guiding themselves. We will incite animosity between them through our factions. When a light shall shine among them, we shall extinguish it by ridicule or death, whichever suits us best. We will make them rip each other's hearts out and kill their own children. We will accomplish this by using hate as our ally, anger as our friend. Hate will blind them totally, Never shall they see that from their conflicts we emerge as their rulers. They will be busy killing each other. They will bathe in their own blood and kill their neighbors for as long as we see fit. We will benefit greatly from this, for they will not see us, for they cannot see us. We will continue to prosper from their wars and their deaths. We shall repeat this over and over until our ultimate goal is accomplished. We will continue to make them live in fear and anger through images and sounds. We will use all the tools we have to accomplish this. The tools will be provided by their labor. We will make them hate themselves and their neighbors. This they must never know. We will always hide the divine truth from them, that we are all one. They must never know that color is an illusion. They must always think that they are not equal. Drop by drop, drop by drop, we will advance our goal. We will take over their land, resources and wealth to exercise total control over them. We will trick them into accepting laws that will steal the little freedom that they have. We will establish a money system for the prisoners forever, keeping them and their children in debt. When they shall band together, we shall accuse them of crimes and present a different story to the world. For we will own all the media. We will use our media to control the flow of information and their sentiment in our favor. When they shall rise up against us, we will crush them like insects, for they are less than that. They will be helpless to do anything, for they will have no weapon. They must never learn this truth, for they will turn against us, for their work. They will be rewarded with earthly things and great titles, but never will they become immortal and join us. Never will they receive the light and travel the stars. They will never reach the higher realms, for the killing of their own kind will prevent passage to the realm of enlightenment. This they will never know. The truth will be hidden in their face. It will be so close that they will not be able to focus on it until it's too late. Oh yes, so grand will the illusion of freedom be that they will never know that they are our slaves. When all is in place, the reality that we have created from them will own them. This reality will be their prison. They will live in self-delusion. When our goal is accomplished, a new era of domination will begin. Their minds will be bound by their beliefs, the beliefs we have established from time immemorial. But if ever they find out that they are equal, we shall perish. This they must never know. If they ever find out that together they can conquer us, they will take action. They must never ever find out what we have done, for if they do, we shall have no place to run, for it will be easy to see who we are once the veil has fallen. Our actions will have revealed who we are, and they will hunt us down, and no person shall give us shelter.